When recording music in your home studio, you probably notice that you can record in 16, 24, and 32-bit audio. I've seen people talk about how you should always use the highest quality audio anytime you're recording something, and I've also seen people say that, you know what, 16-bit audio is good enough. So let's talk about what the actual differences are between those different audio files and what's the best for you. And to help you even more on your mixing and mastering journey, I've put together an amazing PDF of my favorite 100% free plugins that I use all the time when I mix and master music. So if that sounds interesting to you, check out the description. I have a link to that download, and it's my gift to you. If you don't know who I am yet, I'm Bobby Balo, the mixing and mastering engineer at Rayton Productions, and I help home studio owners and bedroom producers make radio-ready music without needing any expensive gear or unnecessary plugins. I also run a Facebook community to help music creators. It's called the Home Studio Fast Track. So if you have questions or want to network with other music creators, definitely stop on by. So let's start by clearing up some myths surrounding 16, 24, and 32-bit WAV files. But to do that first, we need to understand what bit depth is and how those file formats differ. And we're going to talk about some science in this video, so I'm going to go get that lab coat. Wow, I feel so safe now and really hot in this studio. Now, many of you may or may not believe what I'm about to say, but bit depth does one thing and one thing only, and that is determine the maximum dynamic range of our audio file. That's it. End of discussion. That's all it does. If you aren't sure what dynamic range is, that's simply the difference between the loudest and the quietest sounds in an audio file. It doesn't make things sound more 3D. It doesn't make things sound more hi-fi. It's literally just the difference between the loudest moments and the quietest moments. And most of the time, we can't even take advantage of the full dynamic range of a 16-bit audio file. And there's more on this later, so stick around to the end. So how does bit depth determine the dynamic range? The first thing that you need to understand is that digital audio is inherently different than analog. Anytime we're recording a sound digitally, we need to quantize that waveform, which is just a fancy word for assigning a number to the amplitude of that audio that we recorded at every single point that we're sampling at. And you can set your sampling rate in your digital audio workstation, and typically, for most audio, people choose 44.1 kilohertz, which means that we have 44,100 different little data points in every second of audio where we have to assign a number to the amplitude. And this is where the differences between 16, 24, and 32-bit wave files happens. When we assign a number to the amplitude of our audio signal, 16-bit audio files have the least number of values we can pick from to assign that value. 24-bit files have a lot more numbers to choose from, and 32-bit has way, way, way more numbers to choose. And in my opinion, it's completely overkill. Now, we're always going to be off by some amount when we're assigning a value to that waveform. So there's going to be some sort of rounding error that occurs. And for 24 and 32-bit audio files, because they have way more numbers to choose from, their rounding error is going to be a lot less than a 16-bit file. Okay, hopefully you follow me because the next part is very important. Now, the lower this quantization error the lower the resulting distortion becomes. And you can think of this distortion as basically white noise that's also added to the signal. And because there's less of this white noise that's added to our signal, we have a lower noise floor for 24 and 32-bit audio. And what I think a lot of people get mixed up is that when they hear terms like rounding error or quantization error, they think that that limits the ability for us to record an accurate waveform, which is absolutely not the case. Quantization error is literally just adding noise to our signal. What is actually in charge of capturing all the frequencies is the sampling rate. And a 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate will capture the entire range of human hearing with 100% accuracy for band-limited signals like music. If you want to dive a little deeper into that whole discussion, which sounds like black magic, but it really isn't, check out the Nyquist-Shannon theorem. Okay, but back to 16, 24, and 32-bit audio. So it turns out we can calculate all this different rounding error mathematically. If you do the math or you go on Wikipedia and look it up, you will find out that a 16-bit audio file has a maximum dynamic range of 96 decibels. 24-bit audio files will completely capture those 96 decibels of dynamic range from 16-bit, and it will add another 48 decibels to our dynamic range. And 32-bit audio files, which are completely over the top and ridiculous, can capture 192 decibels. I cannot 
think of a single reason why you would need that much dynamic range. So you may be wondering at this point, isn't more dynamic range better? The answer is yes and no. If you're trying to impress your friends on paper with fancy specifications, then yeah, 32-bit is way better than 24 or 16-bit. But if we're talking about listening to a high-fidelity 24 or 32-bit audio file compared to a 16-bit file, it's pretty unlikely for you to even hear the difference. However, when it comes to recording, that is a completely different topic. Part two of this video, which will be coming out next week, will go over that in more detail and it will give you some ways for you to determine which bit depth you should be recording at. Now let's talk about why it's so hard to perceive any differences between 16, 24, and 32-bit audio. And that comes down to what actually happens when we try to play our digital music back through speakers or our headphones. And here's the sad reality. Even if we have an audio file that has 144 or 192 dB of dynamic range using these higher bit depth audio files, when we go to play them back, we have to convert them from digital to analog. Otherwise, our speakers or headphones have no idea what that signal is. And to do that, you use a digital to analog converter or a DAC. As of 2021, the very best DACs made in all all the scientific equipment that I've seen only has a maximum dynamic range of about 125 dB. So essentially, if we have any dynamic range in our song that exceeds 125 dB, it literally just gets thrown away when we try to play the audio back. And unfortunately, there is no getting around this. Yeah, that sucks. So now that you know that our playback is limited by our converters, we can just focus this discussion on 16 and 24-bit audio because essentially 24 and 32-bit audio is going to have the same dynamic range once it's played back. So in order to perceive a difference between 16 and 24-bit audio, two things have to happen. The first thing is that the music we're playing back has to have a dynamic range greater than 96 dB. And that's pretty unlikely because we have this loudness war and most modern music only has a dynamic range of a maximum of 20 dB. The only genre that I can think that consistently might have more than that would be orchestral music. And the second thing that also has to happen at the same time is that you have to play back the audio 96 dB louder than the noise in your listening environment. That's loud. And that's actually stupid loud. It's painfully loud. So for me personally, I'm not ever going to be able to hear a difference unless I want to wake up my neighbors. So what this all boils down to is that if you really want to perceive a difference between 16 and 24-bit audio, there's a whole bunch of certain circumstances that all have to line up for you to even hear the difference. And 32-bit audio is completely ridiculous and a waste of time, data, space, money, any, etc., but if you listen to extremely dynamic music, like orchestral music, at a volume louder than 96 dB SPL, then you probably will hear something. So despite all the miraculous differences that people say they can hear between 16, 24, and 32-bit audio, the actual differences are going to be extremely subtle and most likely unnoticeable. And remember, the only difference between 16, 24, and 32-bit audio is the dynamic range that each of those can hold. It has nothing to do with how well the waveform is reconstructed. It's simply the amount of noise that's added to that file. Whew, that was a lot. So don't forget to pick up that PDF of my favorite free plugins so that you don't have anything holding you back when you're mixing or mastering your music. And it would mean a lot to me if you support this channel by sharing this video or maybe another one to your friends on Facebook, Reddit, or other online communities. Be on the lookout for part two of this video next week where we dive into what bit depth you should be recording at. And as always, thank you so much for your time and attention today, and I hope to see you in another video.